I often find myself surprised when I'm on set and it's time to do a scene and this person's been around and then all of a sudden the camera's rolling and this like they morph into something else. How do you know an actor is the real deal? I suppose, like anything, uh, there are many different ways uh, for actors to be, you know, quote unquote, good or bad. Uh, and, you know, I think you can, I've started to think about them a little bit like athletes. And, you know, some work harder than others, some have some natural talent. Um, but there are also specialty kind of approaches like uh, uh, let's say like a a quirky actor you know like a specialty three-point shooter it doesn't mean that this person is good at all the things but cast correctly casting I guess is really part of it uh, if they're in the right spot you put them in a position to succeed so one person can really shine if they're in the right role and it's a well-written role of course whereas that same person you could see on a different set on a different day in a different role and you're like Ooh, i don't know about that like it's so there are a number of factors that said every once in a while and i would not know how to to quantify it but every once in a while i find myself behind the camera and i'm watching something i'm like oh this person's going to be around forever like the, you, you there's just something um, you know, I mean, I guess back in the day you would think of that like, oh, they've got it. You know, I, I hesitate to put it that way. But that said, I have seen that. I've seen actors where you're like, oh, like that's amazing. I had, I had the good fortune of working with um, Matt Damon on, on a tiny little like a YouTube thing. I, I watched George Clooney work um, and they are so prepared and so comfortable. There's like a confidence that they carry with them. They uh, treated everybody around them uh, phenomenally well. They were very loose, but then when it came to time to work, they could snap right in. You could tell they had done the work. So all, all of this stuff, whereas other actors come, they don't know their lines. Uh, and so I think part of it is just preparation, truly. And on set that comes across as like, wow, they're really talented, but really it's just that they put in the work. Uh, so I think that's part of it, but you know, I, I, I often find myself surprised when I'm on set and it's time to do a scene and this person's been around and then all of a sudden the camera's rolling and this like, they morph into something else. So I don't know where some of these things come from. Uh, I know some of it is work, is prep, but some of it, that maybe there is just a natural thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little bit of magic, I think. I don't know. And I, I continue to wonder the same thing. But, yeah. What other qualities are you looking for in an actor? You know, it's interesting. So for me, because I have no power over choosing an actor, um, in my position as a cinematographer, the actors are, are chosen. So whoever's there, like I'm gonna do whatever I can do with them. Uh, there are little treats that some actors bring. Um, there are some actors who just physically, their eyes will catch a light really well. They have like big or big brown eyes, let's say, and they just almost no matter where they are, they'll always catch a little bit of light. And then some actors, their eyes are a little like deeper. I think I have kind of smallish eyes and it can get tricky because like an eye light can go a long way uh, when you're lighting somebody in terms of creating an empathy. There's something really magical about an eye light. And some actors, it's hard to get the eye light. You're like trying to find the spot and some of them won't take it. So, I mean, that's a... That's a purely physical thing that they have no control over. So there are like treats like that. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this, and you know, skin tones, different actors they have. You're just like, oh, this like takes the, 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 the warmth really well. So there are little things like that. But a, um, I mean, I guess as with most people on a set, there really is to somebody being um, kind and professional. 
being prepared. That's a, actually preparation is maybe one of the biggest things because we I've a number of times in my life we I have with a director we plan this shot where we're, oh they're going to take them out the door we're going to dolly all the way down and then they sit here and then they're going to interact with this person and get in their car and go and then the actor can't get through their lines and you have to reapproach the entire scene and do it because somebody doesn't know their lines and sometimes that's hard because they have a ton of lines and that's brutal I wouldn't be able to do that but sometimes it's a lack of preparation. So I guess, yeah, I suppose for all the all the random things I just named, I want a prepared actor, somebody who's just taking it seriously, because like it it affects my ability to do a good job if somebody comes in unprepared. So I think something as basic as that is about all you can ask from somebody is don't be a dick and be prepared. That's that goes a long way. So if someone is not prepared, mm -hmm. then you're doing numerous retakes. People are reading them their lines. Mm -hmm. It's constant. Yeah, there's there's constant. Like you have to reset. You have to take it all in pieces. And if they can only get a few lines at a time, it means you have to cut to something else. Because in the edit, you need when they're when they're resetting, you have to cut. So it's forcing your hand in an edit, and you have to rethink the way you're building a scene, which can mean this is not the way we intended, or this isn't this isn't going to feel the way we want this to feel. Uh, but you have to, you know, because and and look, the, I say that as though it's really easy that you know you're doing a shoot, especially if there's you know one or two lead characters, and they have to memorize lines for 15 weeks every day and the scripts are being rewritten it is a big ask that is a big load that these actors are carrying like it really i i empathize with them it's really hard acting is i know we all tend to think of it as like oh celebrity and you're famous and you're it is brutal it is hard work especially if you're on a tv show scripts are changing you have tons of dialogue and then on top of that you have all these people whispering in your ear. I have to gauge when we do it. Let's say we're shooting a scene and an actor, you know, on top of all their lines, maybe a director gives them, oh no, this part, don't forget, you need to be sad in this little thing, but then come back up. But then for me, I maybe need an actor to land in a certain spot and maybe they haven't. And I will have to gauge, going back to reading the room, if they seem overwhelmed, I won't give them that note on the first take. I will like let them get a little more comfortable. And then if I can do anything on my side to adjust, maybe we tweak a light, maybe I move my camera, then I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm waiting until they're comfortable and then as gently as I can, I'll just be like, hey, don't forget, like after you get up from the dinner table, I need you to land in this area. And I have to be very careful because I am lower priority you want the performance to to work if the performance doesn't work it doesn't matter how pretty my light is you want the performance to lead so for me i have to make sure an actor is comfortable and that they feel comfortable with me and then gauging when they're too overwhelmed or or it's okay now to give them a note or sometimes you know some directors prefer me to give notes sometimes i go to the director and i say hey you need to remind them that they have to get to this area and things like that. So there are lots of little things that actors are constantly being bombarded with. It's it's so I think for for a cinematographer or a camera operator, uh, it's really important to have empathy and realize that these actors, even if you don't like them, they are carrying a lot, and you need to protect them and their space, their headspace, and the physical space that you're working in. Yeah, that's why I always, and I've, I've said this numerous times, but when people say, oh, well, so-and-so doesn't want to hang out in between takes and they just go back into their dressing room. Oh, yeah. But I think that they would need that time. Oh, man. There's, I would not, I would definitely not hang out in between takes. Like, there's no way. There's just so much. And people, you know, especially if um, an actor has any kind of celebrity, people get a little, you know, googly-eyed and a little, and they want to interact. They want to be able to go home to their spouse and just be like, you know, I was talking with George Clooney about chicken today. But they are, there's so much going on for them. So I do my best to like, just 
stay out of their way uh, because there's there's really a lot of people are really pulling at actors' attentions. Same with directors too, but it they don't have usually that the celebrity attached, and people get. You know, people get weird around celebrity, unfortunately. 